I know, I know. The author of My Hero Academia, Koei Horikoshi, has stated that he's already forgotten about this whole traitor thing. Perhaps, due to popular demand, he'll incorporate it later in the manga. But for now, it doesn't mean we can't theorize about it, right? I'm Truth Hero, and welcome back. Today, we'll be talking about the real possibility that Takoyaki Boy is the traitor of UA. Now, much of the credit for this theory goes to Evil Snow Cookie on Reddit, and I'll leave a link to that post in the description below, which you guys can check out. I just felt that I had to expand upon this and do an analysis for Shoji's character, as there's not many videos talking about him in this light, and the evidence for it, well, it's there. Let's check it out. Before we dive into the evidence for Shoji, however, let's first go over the origins of his name, as this will be very important later on. The Shoji from Mezu Shoji is a Japanese style sliding door with translucent paneling allowing faint light and sound to penetrate it. A door that hides nothing if someone on the other side is listening. This is taken from the expression Kabe ni mimi ari, Shoji ni mi ari, which translates to walls have ears, doors have eyes. Certainly fitting of a character with the ability to morph his arms into eyes and ears, and one, as we'll find out, that is a lot more suspicious than just the mask he wears. Part 1. The USJ Incident Although it is unlikely that Choji was responsible for jamming communications at the USJ, as some Denki theories stress, he could have easily been the one to leak information to the League of Villains. With Choji's abilities and stealth, it makes him the perfect candidate for espionage. Having a heightened sense of hearing through organ replication, it would be very easy for him to overhear scheduling information from the teachers and then relay this information to whoever he wants. During the USJ attack, Shoji is not teleported away by Kurogiri, and although he's not the only student occupying this position, he's certainly kept out of harm's way. While Shoji does jump on Kurogiri to stop him from teleporting Ida, he doesn't tell his classmates immediately about Kurogiri's body and his weakness. If he realized this, why not tell them, and all the teachers, with all his mouths? Shoji, despite his appearance, isn't really a quiet person. So, why sit on this information? Part 2. The Training Camp Arc During the Training Camp Arc, there are a number of ways in which Shoji interacts with his classmates and the villains that are suspicious. For one, Shoji is not seen in the hot springs with the other boys. Unless Shoji can't bathe wearing a mask and simply wants to hide his face, there is no reason for him to be absent from this gathering. This would be the perfect time to slip out and meet the villains to arrange parts of a plan, especially when the boys are, well, distracted. <laughs> Koei Horikoshi has stated that Shoji's training at the camp wasn't really demanding. This again gives Shoji the energy and perhaps the time to plan things with the villains. Speaking of plans with villains, let's talk about Shoji's interactions with them. After Shoji encounters Deku and is made aware of the plan to capture Bakugo, he and his classmates try to escort Bakugo to safety. While returning to the camp headquarters, Mr. Compress uses his quirk to steal Bakugo as well as Tokoyami. Mezo Shoji, a student able to pinpoint the exact location of his classmates in a building with multiple floors, didn't hear anything behind him? Shoji could have easily been able to hear Mr. Compress sneaking up on them in the forest, and at the very least, could have seen his approach with his eyes in all directions. Now I understand that at this point, Shoji is currently carrying Deku, so he really only has three of his six arms available. But still, what is he doing with this side of his body? Nothing! There is really no excuses for Shoji missing this. So it begs the question, did Shoji let Mr. Compress snatch his classmates? Later, when attempting to rescue the compressed Bakugo and Tokoyami, he doesn't hurt Mr. Compress. Also, besides Dobby sending a wave of blue flames his way, Shoji isn't directly engaged with any of the villains like Shoto and Deku are. He does throw Toga off of Deku, but this could easily be acting since he's not using excessive force against her, and the villains plan on keeping Deku alive anyway. Shoji does recover Tokoyami, but this is the perfect cover for his betrayal. If Shoji plays the part correctly, he looks like a hero to his class for saving Best Bird Boy, 
while also staying loyal to the League of Villains and letting them leave with Bakugo. Since taking Tokoyami was simply an improvisation for Mr. Compress, this could easily be a distraction by the League of Villains to make Shoji look like a hero. There is no reason a kid with six arms can at least attempt to reach both of his classmates. As we'll see, Shoji is very logical, so he would have thought about doing this. Later, when the students are talking about rescuing Bakugo, Shoji actually tries to dissuade them from doing so. Part 3, Shoji's Personality From his position in the exact middle of the class, to his simultaneously impressive yet lackluster quirk, Mezu Shoji blends into his class and his surroundings better than an actual Shoji in a traditional Japanese house. He is perfectly unnoticed, but not too aloof and invisible as to spark suspicion. When the students are moving into their new dorms and showcasing their rooms, Shoji's is completely barren save for a mattress. Shoto asks if he's a minimalist, and Shoji explains he just doesn't like a lot of junk. While I appreciate incorporating the Japanese trope of minimalism into the anime and giving some background for Shoji's personality, this type of lifestyle is perfect for someone looking to fly under the radar. Shoji can simply complete his mission of betrayal, or if anyone catches on to him, easily pack his things and skip town. This unique position of being unnoticed also really fits well with Shoji's status in his class and society. As I've mentioned in many My Hero Academia videos, those who are deformed or disenfranchised in society are often the ones who turn to villainy. Shoji is an outcast because of his appearance and hides this with a mask. In concept drawings for Shoji's character, he has a rather scary appearance, donning an intimidating mouth and a jagged set of teeth. While less pronounced in the anime with the cover of his hair, Shoji's head is rather elongated, almost beast looking. In fact, Nejure actually asks him about this, and before Shoji can give an uncomfortable explanation for his mask, she moves on to another student. This continues the pattern of hiding Shoji's face, and an explanation as to why he hides it, further rousing suspicion of Shoji's past. There is another element to being an outcast, and that is finding other people that revel in your dispossessed condition. I have always been partial to the idea that there are multiple traitors within UA. Well, why not for Shoji? Why can't the traitor of UA be Shoji and someone else? Someone else who is also hidden from society. I won't go into all the evidence surrounding Hagakure, such as her being suspicious at the USJ incident, or the fact that she's the one who organized the shopping trip which led Shigaraki to encounter Deku, but the point here is that Shoji and Hagakure are both outcasts in society, and they also both excel in the art of stealth. The two have actually worked together before as they were partners in the final exam, giving them the opportunity to get to know each other and perhaps to hatch a plan against UA. Another piece of evidence that is often raised when discussing the UA traitor is the students missing from the beds. Shoji was present, but this wouldn't matter since at that exact time, Hagakure was missing. They could have easily taken turns, Shoji slips out at bath time, and then Hagakure follows up a little later in the middle of the night to make sure everything is ready with the villains. Shoji and Hagakure, a perfect stealthy couple. Perhaps a girl without an appearance, who just wants to be seen, would fall for a boy with a deformed one who desires to be hidden. And, and, and those muscles, ooh, those muscles, Shoji. I leave you with this, a closer examination of Shoji's name. As stated before, it comes from the expression, walls have ears, doors have eyes. However, there is an extension of this phrase in Catherine Fisher's incarceration series, which is the following. Walls have ears, doors have eyes. Trees have voices, beasts tell lies. Beware the rain, beware the snow. Beware the man you think you know. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below, if Horikoshi does remember the whole traitor thing, is Mezo Shoji a good candidate? And is he working with Hagakure? If you don't think so, let me know who you think the traitor is down below as well. If you like My Hero Academia content, enroll at UA today by clicking subscribe. And until next time, plus ultra.